Welcome to the special music edition of What's Next with Diana Pierce. My guest is the famous big time, big deal, oh Gary God. Hines. I'm so glad we're friends for many years. But yeah, let me tell you about his group, The Sounds of Blackness. They received three Grammy Awards, four stellar awards, one Emmy nomination, the International Peace, Time for Peace Award, the International Dance Music Award, five NAACP Image Award nominations, and one NAACP Image Award. You're racking them up. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much on behalf of Sounds of Black. This is an honor, Di. Now, I know that this is a body of work, and the body of work's been going on for a long time, but this is what I found on your website. You say that we perform and proclaim the music, culture, and history of African Americans to audiences all over the world. Yes. And this is your mission statement. It really is, in a nutshell. Yeah. And you've been delivering this to uh, continents, five continents, right? <laughs> we wow. have. You have your traveling suitcase ready to go. We do. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's go back to uh, the 1970s when you started. I asked you who influenced you and see if our audience can guess. Who, what can you play for us to see if they can guess who influenced you? Well, this might be uh, a slight hint. Oh, this will be a slight hint. <laughs> You know that intro, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. The man, Duke Ellington. The one and only Maestro Duke Ellington. Okay, so how does that type of sound then transform to a choir? Mm -hmm. Actually, pretty easily. It, it, it might surprise uh, your viewers to know. Um, Duke Ellington uh, was and still is our, our template for uh, the, the musical concept die of Sounds of Blackness. Um, when we think of Duke, uh, we think of jazz, and of course we should, but uh, Duke did the music of the culture. Uh, Duke had several gospel recordings, uh, in fact, four sacred gospel recordings. He did gospel, spirituals, blues, and jazz. In other words, the music of the culture. And so, uh, when Sounds of Blackness began uh, at uh, my alma mater, McAllister College, um, we were preceded by uh, a wonderful group uh, called, known as the McAllister Black Voices. And uh, when they brought me on in 1971, uh, the vision that the good Lord gave me was to continue the tradition of uh, Duke Ellington uh, and do the music of the culture to people of all backgrounds with messages of inspiration. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really, You've kind of kept that same concept going, that the people have changed through the years. Not mm -hmm. everybody, though. <laughs> yeah, there's that, because you have several that have been with you for a long time. But, right. you know, your soloists have kind of come and gone, and, mm -hmm. and you've launched soloists that are, you know, awesome. And yeah, we've been blessed with uh, amazing talent, uh, instrumentally and vocally. Um, when you talk about careers, um, solos that the people would know, um, <laughs> Of course, uh, the great Cynthia Johnson, uh, and if they don't know that name, they certainly know Funky Town. They do. All over the world. In fact, she's performing overseas as we speak. Um, a lot of people don't know that uh, Alexander O'Neill uh, began with Sounds of Blackness. He moved to Minneapolis from Natchez, Mississippi, and before he got with Jimmy and Terry, he was with Sounds of Blackness for about a year. Uh, I'll never forget he came in an audition, and I, I wanted him cutting the audition short, it's like, my God, this guy's a monster. It's like, <laughs> I don't have to go through all this kind of thing. Um, and, of course, the great Ann Nesby, uh, who, would, again, as we speak, is touring the world kind of thing. We're so proud of her. Uh, and actually, there are, there are several others as well. Mm -hmm. Again, so you then do you then create uh, pieces that feature their vocals, or do you... I, how does that work? Because again, that's kind of changed through time. They bring different gifts and talents. Exactly. Um, both, it happens both ways, uh, Di. So what I mean by that is, um, I've certainly been blessed to, to write uh, specifically for certain voices, like for an Anne or for a Cynthia. Um, but then also there's arrangements that, uh, that were uh, pre-existing that just fit them, you know, like a, a suit. And it's like, okay, this would be great for you. We may or may not even have to transpose keys and all that kind of thing. So it, it, it happens both ways. Your friendship with uh, 
Jimmy and Terry mm -hmm. goes back a long time. Did you meet yes. them in uh, uh, at McAllister or right after you, you left McAllister? Right around that time and actually before then, um, especially uh, Terry Lewis, the, the Lewis and Hines family used to go back uh, literally to the early 70s. Fast forward, and I'll come back to the 70s. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to the early 90s when, when uh, Jimmy and Terry signed Sounds of Blackness. Uh, the first thing they said was, uh, Doc, don't you, the nickname for me is Doc. Uh, Doc Hines, don't change anything. We want to present you to the world just the way you are, okay? Um, so that was one reality. <clears throat> and then on the other hand, they, uh, in the early years, in fact, um, <laughs> Jimmy and Terry, and, and Terry sometimes would even be at the soundboard. They would come to Sounds of Black performances, our Motown show, which we were talking about off camera. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they would say, man, you, if, the, if the horns did this or just the vocals did that kind of thing, you guys are sounding great, but what about this? And, and so, uh, especially uh, Terry uh, was more on the, the funk R&B side, and uh, Jimmy Jam, um, more the uh, sound of Philly, uh, smoother soul kind of thing, and so that's why their musical marriage is such a great one because mm -hmm. those those two forms are so complementary. Did they suggest anything to you? I mean, like, can you, is there like a phrase or, you know, a musical phrase that they would have, you know, recommended? Or that you, after listening to them, you went home and said, okay, I'm going to do this song this way because they, you know, they suggested. I hear what you're saying. I think the closest thing to, to that die was uh, the last song that we recorded on our first record with them. Um, and that was, as you know, The Evolution of Gospel. Um, and uh, I'll never forget, I was blessed to be a staff producer at the time, out at Flight Time, out on 76 in France. Oh, uh, you lived there. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> That's a true story. I, we'd be calling each other at 10, you know, 10 minutes to 10 or 10.35 yeah, yeah. and going, what are you doing? Well, I'm here at Flight Time, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was home, literally. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they call me in, uh, Jam and Lewis did, in, into their office, and, and they said, Doc, um, we, we think we've got a great record here, but we, we want one more uh, song that will be universal, that will be a classic, that will stand the test of time. And the word that keeps com coming to us is optimistic. Optimistic, optimistic. And so, uh, you know, and I forget what hour of the morning it was kind of thing. Um, and we started working on lyrics and all that kind of thing, and they, they played some of the track. Um, so uh, we worked on some of the vocal arrangement, or I would be able to take that and then bring back ideas, and they, of course, had. So, so that's how that would transpire. And was that your first Grammy? Uh, it was, yeah. Well, congratulations yeah. on that one Thank after so the, the run-up to all the rest of this <laughs> stuff. But I, so in 1992, was that when I was yes. watching it? Yes. We were in the newsroom. And we had to watch. It's like we knew you guys were nominated. And yeah. so when your name was uh, called out, we all were like, yeah. Oh, that was around the newsroom, though. I mean, oh, it was everybody, you. you know, so congratulations. You know, another special thing that happened, and thank you for that as well. Um, our governor at the time, uh, Governor Perpich, okay, um, was halfway around the world in uh, Croatia. Remember that the conflict mm -hmm. was happening then? In the middle of that, he and his, his wife, the first lady, um, but they took the time to send us... Uh, you know, a, a telegram or some, some such thing saying, Congrat he's in the middle of a war zone and, and took the time halfway around the world to send that telegram, you know, congratulating us. So stories like yours and that one are just really uh, extraordinary for us. 1995, moving on to that a little bit. So mm -hmm. Africa to America, best gospel album. And that was the Soul Train Music Awards. Yes, the late, great Don Cornelius and, and another... A uh, great supporter uh, of Sounds of Blackness, uh, Don Cornelius, rest his soul. Uh, and his son, uh, my dear friend Tony, who carries on the tradition now uh, with the Soul Train Awards and the Soul Train Cruise and all of that. Um, but to be backstage at the Soul Train Awards and like everybody is there in every genre, hip hop, R&B, gospel, blues, jazz, kind of film, so on and so forth. And everybody's at the Soul Train Awards and uh, uh, to have your name called among the nominees and then to have your name called as the winner. I mean, it was just uh, surreal, <laughs> actually, kind of thing, and just uh, um, overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. Again, congratulations on that one. You've met a lot of interesting people. <laughs> uh, Well-worded that. Well, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, Quincy Jones. Yeah. How did you the work maestro. with him? He, to, to me, he is the, the, the current incarnation of Duke Ellington. Uh, the, the, the present day is, uh, is what I mean to say. Um, 
we were first uh, blessed to meet and work with uh, uh, Maestro Quincy on a, an amazing project called Handel's Messiah Soulful Celebration, which also won a Grammy. It was a multiple artist project. Oh my God, everybody was on there from Johnny Mathis, Gladys Knight, Take Six. I mean, I can't, there were at least 15 artists on there. I can't even think of them all. And um, we all went out to, uh, flew out to LA um, at um, our label at the time. Um, so uh, that was just an, an amazing experience, a and Records, mm -hmm. uh, right on La Brea Avenue. And um, all of those artists were there and we recorded um, the Handel's Messiah Soulful Celebration a Hallelujah Chorus version kind of thing. And so that was the first face-to-face -face meeting uh, with the maestro. Um, and he is just a force of nature. Then you also worked with Lena Horne. <laughs> It's, it's so funny because uh, the first time meeting her, she was doing her one-woman show uh, downtown Minneapolis at the Orpheum. And uh, those were my bodybuilding competition days, <laughs> as you recall. And, uh, and so... Mr. Uh, Minnesota, too. So there you go. <laughs> I only say that to say um, it was the Star Tribune, I believe it was, our old friend John Breen, JB as I call him, um, Somehow my name had came up backstage with Lena Horne and she said, oh, I'd like to meet this, you know, first guy, the black guy to win Mr. Minnesota kind of, thing. and musician and all that, and, and uh, his mom, I think, I think his mom. So you know, my mom, the late great Doris Hines kind of thing, jazz singer extraordinaire. So me and mom went down backstage, you know, to meet Lita at her behest kind of thing. And, and we took a picture together. It's sitting on my, my dresser and I should have brought it oh. uh, for you kind of thing. I'll, we'll get it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. put it in this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just, of course, her show was just um, phenomenal, and she's just um, uh, an incredible human being, an artist, uh, rest her soul. Then, um, Maya Angelou. Yes. Um, now. I don't see her as a singer, so how did that happen? Oh, oh <laughs> but she actually is. Really? Singer, dancer. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes absolutely, big time, yes. yeah. And so she started out, you know, as a, the entertainers of that time, as you know, well, as well as anybody, usually were both dancers, singers, sometimes also musicians. So she's all three. Um, yeah, but, but I take that back. You're, it's, she did all of that and then some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, here's even more for you, Di. So my mom, Dara Sines, and my Angelou were great friends. They met... Um, Mom was uh, singing in, in Honolulu uh, in like the mid 60s, and um, my Angelou was there. She had just sent uh, one of her children off to the University of Ghana, and she had stopped over in Hawaii and she had heard about the great Doris Hines. And anyway, went to Mom's show. They met and became sisters. And so over the years, um, even as kids, you know, phone would ring, ring, Mom. Miss Maya's on the phone kind of thing. So great story in terms of background with them. But in terms of on the professional level, you know, with Sounds of Blackness and all of that, um, we got the call for her film uh, directorial debut, okay, uh, which was called Down in the Delta. A great movie, by the way. Um, and we did a, a song called Don't Let Nothing Keep You Down. And uh, got a chance to meet and work with her, of course, uh, with that soundtrack. You've mentioned your mom twice now. I yeah. had the honor of, of watching you play for your mom, which you did regularly yeah. uh, downtown. And what kind of influence was she on you in your career? I'm so glad you asked. Um, just amazing influence. Uh, going back, uh, you know that I'm a native of Yonkers, New York. Um, love Minneapolis, but still basically a native New Yorker. And the relevance of that to your question, Di, is Growing up in New York um, and our neighborhood at the time, um, the term multi-ethnic wasn't in vogue yet, but in our neighborhood was German, Jewish, Irish, Irish, Russian, Italian, um, uh, Jamaican, you know, and on those hot summer nights, nobody had air conditioning. All those different ethnicities, music would be streaming out into the streets under the windows. And then plus, there'd be guys on the street corner singing doo-wop. Uh, then there was in, on church, at church on Sunday morning, there was gospel and spirituals and anthems. Uh, and then around the house, there was mom singing and practicing her, her jazz, you know, uh, standards um, throughout that. So 
she also encouraged me uh, and my brothers uh, to, to learn an instrument. So we're out, originally I'm a drummer and she got us into uh, the Samuel Dow Drum Corps back in New York. So um, mom uh, was primary influence, guiding force and exposure to all those types of music um, that uh, I believe you hear now in the Sounds of Blackness. Yeah. And, and you, you've got a bunch, that's, that's for sure. And, and I love your mom. Your mom, yeah. I don't know, it was just a couple of years ago when she was still performing. How, how yeah. old was, was she? Um, she was still performing. We lost her uh, when she was 91. And, and right up to just before 91, she was still performing. Bill Clinton. So President Bill Clinton. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about going to the White House. Yes, yes. You know, um, he, well, he's extraordinary. He, we learned he has a photographic memory, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, it was a snowy, horrible uh, Minnesota night when he was still, uh, you know, doing his first uh, bid for presidency. And we got a call to, uh, to come down to the uh, St. Paul Civic Center, if we would, you know, and just to, and to do a few numbers and you know, kind of thing. And, uh, and I think uh, the Star Spangled Banner and so forth, uh, like we were blessed to do for Amy Klobuchar the other day. Oh, so, uh, oh, so okay. So yeah. you're down there doing that? Okay. Yeah, so, Congratulations. Uh, and so it was really a strong, I mean, it was a horrible night, just, you know, blizzard. But anyway, long story short, we got down there. And uh, I'll tell you why I'm emphasizing how horrible the night was. Uh, and uh, we did those songs and, and uh, get a chance to meet him. Um, he never forgot that. So five White House appearances later, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that relationship is ongoing kind of thing. Um, he had us there for Christmas at the White House twice um, for the opening of um, uh, AmeriCorps, um, the American version of Peace Corps kind of thing. I mean, and two or three other occasions kind of thing. Uh, he and, uh, at the time, First Lady Hillary, mm -hmm. and uh, took pictures of him when he would come to Minneapolis. and just So that, that's a great relationship um, and uh, with uh, a lot of history. Yes, that is so, that's fun to hear. Did you yeah. ever then play for President Obama? <laughs> Close. <laughs> Not live. Okay. I mean, he, he used that, so the, the answer would be sort of. And then the, the explanation of sort of is that, uh, again, um, I had a chance to speak with him at length um, on the telephone, especially when he was here. And uh, we were so honored, I was so honored on behalf of the group because he, he said uh, that he and, and uh, uh, Michelle were huge Sounds of Blackness fans and that their house is full of Sounds of Blackness music and that he was going to, um, with our blessing, uh, use some of our songs throughout the campaign. And he surely did. I mean, you could, he'd be in whatever city and in the background you'd hear Hold on, change is coming. And of course, our phones will light up. Gary, the guy, you're playing the sound song. And uh, so we've sort of played for him. It's not live yet. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's coming. We'll, yeah. we'll work on that. Right, right, right. You've been able to, I mean, when I, again, I look at, at all the information, that, that things you've been able to do, and you've held master classes, and you've done um, all kinds of performing, Five Continents for the presidents, and, and all these recordings. You also do master classes for little kids. Absolutely. What did they want to know? What questions did they ask you? Uh, you know, kids are the best, you know, and, and they're super honest, you know, and they'll ask any and everything, which is a beautiful thing. Um, they would ask mainly uh, about, of course, you know, the, the, the names, the pop star names, you know, um, what's Prince really like, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, um, you know, we would we would get into that conversation and ask about the music business. What's it like to be at the Grammys and all that kind of thing? So um, we work that into the master class because you always want to field questions from them while presenting them, you know, with music fundamentals and history and culture and all that kind of thing. Um, and in matter, as a matter of fact, I'll uh, be doing that again um, not too long locally here. Mm -hmm. So we, we've done that um, throughout the Twin Cities and, and uh, are going to be doing more of it. So when you look back at all that you've done, what you're currently doing now, what's next for Gary Hines? Because you always have to keep it fresh, right? Got to keep it fresh. Um, and that's part of the challenge, uh, Lady Di. Um, staying true and being true to, to my own self be true, uh, but at the same time, you know, keeping it fresh, keeping an ear on what's happening you know, today kind of thing, and, and hopefully marrying the two successfully. Um, but I believe in the, in the, uh, the phrase of uh, uh, the great country artist Chet Atkins. And uh, uh, his quote that I love is that there are no songwriters. All music is given. 
you know, and, and I, I thoroughly believe that. Um, now, when it's given to us, our job more than anything is, is not to mess it up, you know, <laughs> probably. Um, so for us, uh, right now, for Sounds of Blackness uh, and myself, Di, um, we are looking to do uh, a few things. Um, one, we're coming up on our 50th anniversary in a year or so. But, You're but, not that old. It can't be. I, well, it started when I was three. So. Oh, of, of course it did. Okay, got it. <laughs> but um, more so in terms of a, a, a track, we're, we're definitely uh, throwing our hat into the ring for more soundtrack work, both uh, film and TV. And right now we're going to have to plug your your sweatshirt is a royalty, <laughs> right? So yes. so give me even a little, you know, riff on the piano. What what makes this what inspired you for this? And you said that that Prince was really the one who inspired. You. And you have his logo on the side too. Yes, we do. Yeah, right there. Right, yeah, exactly. rest his soul. Yeah. Still doesn't seem real that he's gone, but yeah. um so let me try to condense this for you. Um the Genesis is probably the best word for, for royalty, uh, Lady Di, is um, actually KMOJ Radio. Former station manager and good friend and brother, uh, Kelvin Quarles, um, got a grant for a collaboration um, between Sounds of Blackness and High School for Recording Arts right across the river in St. Paul, HSRA. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something because uh, T.C. Ellis, the director over at uh, High School of Recording Arts uh, and former rapper for Prince, as I, yeah, you, you probably remember, um, he's a longtime director there. And he and I were longtime buddies, and we would run into each other at events and all that and say, Gary, we got to do something. T.C., we got to do something together with sounds and, and, and with uh, HSRA. Long story short, here's Kelvin Quarles gets this grant specifically for that to happen. And uh, I'll never forget, we, we had a meeting at HSRA, um, and they said, uh, Gary, we want you, part of this grant, we, we want you to write and record a song for and with the students here at HSRA. And even as, we were, I'll never forget, we were sitting at that meeting, um, the word royalty just immediately started. Like I said, Chet Atkins says, oh, it's given, okay? Um, that's part one. Part two is, um, in what was possibly our last conversation, uh, Prince, God bless him, um, was blessed to know him for 40 plus years. And uh, he would call at two or three in the morning like it was noon, you know. And, and, uh, well, he, you were up, uh, well, probably, right? <laughs> usually, <laughs> yeah. but not always. Yeah. But uh, he, um, and another little quirk of his, no matter how long he knew you frequently, he would call you and say your whole name. Uh, Gary Hines, I have this idea for Sounds of Blackness, Gary Hines. It's a, say, hey, man, how you? I called him maestro kind of thing. And um, he really implored me to uh, be true to the essence of Sounds of Blackness as it directed to the youth. It was like, it really, it was, it's a God thing, really. I mean, just for him to have had that on his mind when the, the royalty um, project was just, you know, being uh, launched kind of thing. And he said, you know, the kids, in terms of their identity, um, and culture and heritage and history uh, and, and putting that to music. I know that's what Sounds of Blackness does, but you guys, guys, guys got to be even uh, more conscientious about it. So he was really, you know, mm -hmm. encouraging me to do that. Um, and so, and not, of course, long after that is when we lost him kind of thing. And that's why we, we when we put royalty out and we said dedicated to Prince, because a lot of people were like, well, did he write it? Did you record it at page? I said, no, no, no. But he was definitely at the heart of uh, the inspiration for that. Strikes the tension, trapped in poverty, generations of injustice and inequality. Ancestors changed the world, and though they came and changed, and you died so much uh, of the challenge um, for African American youth and youth of color, um, just. Uh, historically with the challenges that, that are still systemically going on, are identity and image related. Okay? So um, to know that you're not all of those things, especially those negatives that are so often heaped upon you, um, hardcore, at risk, this, that, um, it's like, no, you come from a great and proud heritage, you know, which you may or may not have even been taught. And so this song is for you uh, and to uplift you and uh, to build self-esteem and to improve uh, your image. Mm -hmm. 
Your, your lyrics are always positive, but that's yeah. intentional. That's deliberate, intentional. Uh, like we say uh, in our manifesto, I love that word that you said earlier, mm -hmm. um, Sounds of Blackness, our mission is to glorify God by uplifting people of all backgrounds through African-American music with images uh, and messages of positivity. You're doing it. Yeah, well, we're yeah congratulations. Give it the old college try. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to McAllister. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate this. Oh, my Again. Honor. Thank oh, you. oh, let's tell people you still you so you have Motown coming back real quick. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, our dear friend, uh, owner, proprietor of uh, the great internationally renowned Dakota Jazz Lounge downtown, 10th and Nicollet. Uh, nice plug for you there, Lowell. Mm -hmm. um, implored us uh, and me to bring back our, we call it Soul of the 60s, as you know, our Motown show, uh, which we haven't done actually for a few years now. Um, and so we are looking to bring Soul of the 60s, Sounds of Blackness, uh, back to the Dakota uh, this spring. So Stay tuned. Stay tuned. As they say. <laughs> yeah. So we'll release that. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you, Di. For everybody at home, again, if you want to catch up on uh, what they're doing downtown or any other of the schedule of appearances, performances by Sounds of Blackness, just head to soundsofblackness.org.